to graph parametric equations on the TI calculators, the first thing I would do is I'm going to go to mode right here and I push that mode button. And then you can see on that fourth row, on mine it's the fourth row, it might be slightly different for yours depending on your operating system. I, I'm starting off in standard function mode. And there's also, you may have used polar mode before if you're in pre cal, but we're going to go to PAR for parametric. Okay. And so once I've hit enter on that and move the highlight over, I'm going to do second quit. And now what you'll notice, whenever I go to my y equals, we graph our normal equations, you're going to see that now it doesn't just say y equals, it says x of t and y of t. So I'm going to type in my x equation into the x spot. Now you might be saying, how do I do the t? Well, no, this same variable you use for x when we're graphing standard rectangular equations, it also has a t next to it. And I don't have to do anything different. I push that, that's just our variable. Whatever mode we're in, it's going to make that our variable. When we're in polar mode, it's going to do the theta there. So I have t minus 3 for that equation, and then I can go down to my y equation. We're going to do t squared minus 6, and then I can hit graph, and you're going to see the graph of your equation. That, that one's very simple, right? Here's your point at t equals 0, and then it goes that way. Now, let's look at a slightly more complicated problem. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do a projectile motion type problem. So I'm not going to go into the, all the ins and outs of how to write the projectile motion equations. But if you had a projectile fired at 154 feet per second at an angle of 21 degrees, these would be your equations. And so I'm going to type those in real quick. Okay, now that I've got my equations, what you're going to find when you hit graph is the graph doesn't look good. This projectile should be going in this direction because the X, the horizontal distance traveled, should be increasing. We should see something like this and it should be looking like a projectile. And so we know something's not right with the graph. And so there's a few things that I kind of want to point out to you uh, to be on the lookout for. First off, when we go to our window, you see this window button right here. Here is where we got to be careful. So first off, we have our T min and our T max. For this particular problem, T is in seconds have our starting time at zero, and then I have our maximum time at six. I'm just going to take that down to a five since it looks like I, I said uh, T is from zero to five in the title up there. Now this T step is kind of interesting. I'm going to come back to that minute. You see now nothing has really changed so far. Our next thing that we got to be careful about, and we, we're typically good at doing this when we're in geometry, but then we forget when we get to pre -cal, we have to make sure we're in degrees. This problem is going in the wrong direction because we're still in radians. So I'm going to go to mode and go over to degree and hit enter. And then we hit graph. Now our graph is starting to look a little bit better. Now what I'm going to do though is it looks like our projectile is shooting off to the right, but we don't have nearly big enough of a window to view it. So I'm going to go back to my window and I'm going to take my X maximum. Let's take it to like 400. And then we're going to take our Y minimum. We can say what negative 10. We'll take our Y maximum up to like 80. And let's get a look at our graph. And it actually looks pretty good. I'm going to increase that X maximum a little bit more. It looks like 400 wasn't enough to do it. Let's see if 500 does it. And it does. And that, that's a good look at our graph right there. Now, there's one more caveat that I want to address. I want to come back to this um, T step because that can do problems for if you do, don't know what that's doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it at one to illustrate an idea. And you're going to see a bunch of like straight jagged lines. What that T step is, is that's how long the calculator will go before it puts another point. Uh, meaning if I do my T step at one, that means it's going to plot a point at T equals zero, then a plot at T equals one, then a plot at T equals two, so on and so forth. And then it's just going to connect those with straight lines. Obviously, our projectile is not going to take this path. So what we want to make sure we do is you want to make sure with your T step, you're putting something relatively small like point one. So we're getting to see the real curve of that graph as it takes off. And so last slide, I've kind of summarized the things I want you to check whenever you're graphing your projectile motion equations. You need to make sure your mode is parametric. You need to go to your window and set your T min probably at zero because your time probably starts at zero. Your T max at five or, or whatever you want the end time to be. And then make your T step something pretty small to know how to know how often to graph a point. And then the last thing I would say to make sure that's kind of a, a common doozy is make sure that you're in the appropriate angle units, radians, or degrees.